Hello. Um, I'm having to record this real quick because I'm in between different themes, and hopefully I won't get disturbed. Or you might not hear. You might hear somebody else on my thing. You can kind of hear these hallways outside. I do apologize for all that. What we're going to do is we're going to solve quadratic equations using square roots. It shouldn't take very long. I am going to go through it quickly, so if you do have questions, please make sure you ask the next day. Uh, I want you to find the roots of a quadratic equation using square roots. Remember, roots, solutions, zeros. Those are all the same thing. Your big question, which we haven't had in a while, is what pattern or patterns do you see when solving by square roots? Okay, so again, there could be more than one pattern you might notice. Try to make sure you take notice of those. Write them down. Okay, so our first one that we want to look at, let's go back over what is the square root. This is something you should have learned in middle school. Like where I say the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. Why is that true again? Because 2 squared, 2 to the second power, 2 times 2 is 4. And so you're basically going backwards. A square root is the opposite of a square. So what I would like you to do is take the time, pause this right now, and make a squares table uh, from 1 to 25. So like 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and that way you should know that those square roots, like 4 the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is, you know, like that. Take a few moments for that, please. Thank you. All right, so you've done that. Now let's look at 3 squared equals 9. We know that, but keep in mind that negative 3 squared is also equal to 9. So algebraically, when I say something like x squared is equal to 9, and I know that to solve for any variable, you need to do opposites. So the opposite of a square is a square root. When you do that, you get x equals. So I'm taking the square root, x equals, and the square root of 9 is 3, but because there's two answers there, positive 3 and negative 3, I'm going to put plus and minus 3. So when you take the square root, algebraically, I want to see two answers. And here's the reason why. Look at what we did with the graphs. You did this where you said x is equal to, say, x squared minus 9. Okay, remember what yesterday or the day before you said y is equal to x squared minus 9. You found the zeros. Oops, I missed did that. The zeros. You saw the graph. Notice that the answers came out to positive. 3 and negative 3. So that's kind of like what you're doing here with square roots. Okay? So that's why I purposely made that worksheet the way I did so you would have that. Let's look at another, some more examples. x squared is equal to 16. You take the square root, you just basically take the square root of 16, which is 4, and you're going to put x is equal to plus or minus 4. That's it. What happens if it's like this? x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. Well, before you can do the square root, the 25 needs to be on the other side. So we're going to move it to the other side and say x squared is equal to 25. Notice the sign change. It went from a minus to a plus. Then take the square root, and the square root of 25 is 5. So we're going to put plus and minus 5 because it's a positive and a negative. 4x squared minus 36. Well, let's move the 36 over. So I have 4x squared equals 36. Then I go ahead and divide, and I would get 4x squared is equal to 9. And then I could take the square root and have plus and minus 3. So that's really it. You moved over, divided, and then took the square root. So now square roots are going to be the last thing we do. Okay, and again, I do realize I'm going through this fast, but again, kind of press for time. There really isn't much to this, though. I mean, it is just, if you have something like this, do you see a pattern here with some of these? Again, I know they're all x squareds, and the last thing we're doing is the, x, the square root. But see if you notice a pattern on how you can use square roots as compared to like when we start learning factoring t the next day. Last example, what happens if I say x squared is equal to negative 4? Okay, if you take the square root of a negative number, type it in your calculator, it will tell you no real solution. So anytime you see something like that, you will put no real solution. The reason being is because there is no number times itself that will give you a negative answer, a negative 4. So if I'm trying to say x squared is equal to some negative number and take the square root, the answer would be no real solution. Okay, that's really it for today. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you'll have an assignment on this, so make sure you do that assignment so you can make sure you understand this.
All right, thank you very much.